Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and in this Game Maker tutorial, I'm going to show you some alternative ways to do movement uh, in your game. So what you see here is a basic script that's declaring temporary variables, calling them the letter that the player is going to be pressing. The command that checks if we're pressing the button is keyboard underscore check, parentheses ORD, parentheses single quotation, and then the letter you want it to do, quotations, close the parentheses, close the parentheses, end line. Repeat the process for any buttons you want to be uh, held down. And I've done this inside of a script, so you can right click here, create a new script, and then you can uh, call on this script from any object. So underneath these temporary variable uh, allocation, value allocations, uh, I've got some conditional statements. So if we're pressing W, so um, you can say, You can go if w equals true, but if you just put if w, that's exactly the same thing. So to eliminate extra code, you can just go if w is true. Um, so if we're pressing, if this is true, if we're pressing this value is true, which is we're pressing the w button, then we're going to do this. Open bracket, and we're going to do a command called motion underscore add. And what motion add does is it pushes the object in a certain direction. So it takes two arguments for this uh, function. The first argument is the direction. The second ar object, uh, I'm sorry, the second argument is the speed. Uh, so it'd be one pixel per frame. And the number you see here uh, references how Game Maker handles direction. And I've done this little thing to help you. Sorry for the bad art. It's what my, I'm good at. I'm good at bad art. So. How direction works in Game Maker is 0 means moving to the right, uh, 180 is to the left, 90 is up, and 270 is down. So, like, say you wanted to do 45 degree angle, 45 would be right here. If you wanted to go in the top right, it would be up right there. So, once you understand that, it becomes easy to use um, motion add. So, if we say 90, well, then we know that means up. So, if we're, if we're pressing W, we want to go up uh, in, a, in the direction one. Uh, we're going to add one to our motion. So motion add is different from just changing X and Y. So basically, according to Newton's laws of physics, if nothing will stop an object once it's in motion, unless you know something has to stop it, it'll, otherwise it'll keep going forever. And the same applies here. When you add a motion, if I press W one time, it's going to keep going up one pixel per frame even if I let go of W and if I hold down W then it's gonna gain one uh, pixel per frame every frame I'm holding it down so after one second I'm gonna zoom off to the top uh, super fast so we have to do something to stop this from happening we'll just continue down here this is the same thing except we're moving into a different direction we're moving left we're moving right we're moving down but here we have our way of basically stopping the player if we don't play anything if we're not pressing anything so if uh if you've watched my javascripting for beginners for rpg maker mv you've already seen i just uh, went over these exclamation marks so the exclamation mark just like in javascript it works in many programming languages including gml which is what we're in now um, it's basically the sign for not uh, so if we're not pressing a and so we're using shift and seven two times to create this uh, controller type thing that says make sure that this and this and this and this. So if we're not pressing A and we're not pressing S and we're not pressing D and we're not pressing W, then do this. So Game Maker has this built in variable called friction. And friction is what's going to stop something that's in motion. So if we set our friction to one, that's going to completely stop. So if we're not pressing anything, set our friction to 1, completely stop it. Otherwise, our friction is 0. That means if we're pressing any one of these or a combination of these, we're going to remove all of our friction so that we can continue to move. But like I said, if we hold down the button, we're going to zoom off in one direction. So we need to somehow cap our speed. So we can decide how fast we want our character to move and then set that number. So if our speed, which is another built-in variable, is greater than four then we're gonna say speed equals four now you see how we have a conditional statement but we're not using any brackets so this works the same way as if I did this 
that's exactly the same but it looks a little more sloppy and it's just more code so why would we include that when we don't have to if we're gonna make a conditional statement that only does one thing we can write our conditional statement and then with no brackets we can just write what happens if that's true so we do that uh, right here we're actually not gonna use this this is more for like a shooter type thing if you want the image uh, angle uh, like the, the character to move based on where the the mouse is at so what I'm doing here is I'm writing I'm typing in two forward slashes and that's going to uh, comment out whatever I write there so it's not gonna read that at all <clears throat> So on our player object, I have another way of doing um, the movement, but what I'm doing is, I wrote it as a script, but the, that doesn't mean it's going to be used at all unless I call on that script. So on the step event, I've got some code in here, I've just went to control and add some code right there, and I'm calling on the script player move. I'm also doing it right here by dragging some uh, uh, execute script in right there. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete this. This is finding depth. And we're going to go over depth in another tutorial. But instead of uh, calling the script right there, we're going to put it all in one thing. So we're going to go script underscore find underscore depth. And depth is doing this is just going to make it uh, not look funny when we walk in front of something. But we look like we're behind it, but we're actually in front of it. I'll go over the the code because it's so quick depth equals y times negative one in line that's it <clears throat> we'll go over why you need to do that later on but what I'm doing here is setting image underscore angle to zero um, just in case on my player move I don't have this commented out this would overwrite it so I could either delete this comment this out or just leave it how it is with that in there but now I can comment this out and just have image angle set to zero now we're, we're just going off track here so let me just show you the little project I made real quick so now when I press WASD I'm moving around and this is like a little dumb prototype game I made months ago you can see we have our level our HP and our experience right here and HP is irrelevant this is all irrelevant basically if they touch you it's game over but they've got some code they're actually a little bit faster than me right now because of our movement speed or they're this exactly the same speed so it's kinda hard to evade them I guess the goal of the game um, is to get all the little blocks but you can see we're moving right through the walls here because we're adding a motion so the motion we didn't uh, put a condition to check for a collision so in order to get around this collision you can see they have collision on in order to get around this collision we can either edit our movement script uh, or we could rewrite it and I want to show you another way so if we go to our step uh, our step event in the player object let's go ahead and comment this out we're gonna use the find depth still we don't need the image angle right now because we're not changing the angle at all we're gonna remove the the comment on this other movement uh, control scheme now, all we'd have to do is uh, put this right here inside of the other one and it would stop the collision but I wanted to, to do two birds one stone so here's our second way to move the character around um, if keyboard underscore check VK right so that means uh, virtual keyboard and we're pressing the right button uh, and then we're also using the and place underscore free so this is a function that checks if there's an object in that place so X is the X per uh, X coordinate and Y is the Y coordinate so X plus four would be to the right so we're saying if we're pressing right and there's nothing four pixels to the right of us then we're going to move uh, right by four pixels and the same thing if we're pressing left and there's nothing four pixels to the left let's go four pixels to the left up is the same down is the same one thing to note is when you go up you're subtracting from Y when you go down you're adding to Y because it starts zero zero on the top left 
and then it goes to all the way down right here. So it's adding to Y as you go down, it's adding to X as you go right. Pretty simple. So now that we've uh, commented out the player move script, we're no longer calling on the player move script. We're no longer changing angle. But now we're using this control screen. So W control scheme. So W A S D is not going to work. But if I could, uh, if I use the up, down, left, right arrow keys, it'll work. It'll also handle a little bit uh, differently. I think we'll be a little bit faster with four pixels. It's also a little bit more uh, like precise. Like if I press it and release it really quickly, it it gets off of it really quickly. Also, a thing to note is I'm trying to go through the wall here it's not letting me because there's something four pixels to the right when I'm pressing it so it's not it doesn't meet the conditions of the the X plus four so it's not going there so they see us we're gonna die here and we're dead and a big goblin killed us so there's a whole a uh, whole bunch of other things that I can show you in this dumb little prototype game I made months ago but um, I think we're going to cut it there because this is like actually to the point and it's not going to digress too much. So this is some alternative ways that you can move your character around. I'm going to open this up for you guys to see if you want to copy paste real quick before I close it. Here's the player move one and here's the, uh, this is the motion add uh, movement and this is the X plus and Y plus minus movement. So there's a couple different ways you can move your your player around hopefully you guys like this quick tutorial if you did give it a thumbs up like favorite share subscribe all the good stuff I really appreciate it you guys are so awesome let me know if you want to see uh, more stuff in game maker uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to like uh, what I'm actually gonna get to how many tutorials I'm gonna get up to or what I'm gonna cover exactly I know I'm gonna make a Zelda clone game step by step but I will like do other tutorials here and there. Anyway, that's all mumbo jumbo. Thank you guys so much for being awesome. We'll see you in the next tutorial.